Hi, I'm Pop Seagong. Welcome to my channel where I show my personal martial art of Bongo Kung Chao Sea Lion. Today I'm going to show you the application of the basic arm crashing drill, or basic application of my basic arm crashing drill, and show you how it's used as an entry when someone attacks. If you're attacking, it's even easier. You just see the hands and you attack and crash through and hit them. Uh, with a counter attack or a def defensive type of attack, because we never have purely defense. Um, it's a little more complicated. Your timing has to be better. Your structure has to be better. And you have to readily identify what they're bringing to you in a combative manner. And if you make a mistake, you suffer. When you're bringing it, you're allowed to make a little bit more mistakes simply because they're not quite sure what you're doing, although you know what you're doing. And that's why I show you from a counter perspective. It's a little more difficult to pull off. And you can see here, we're on the square and as my opponent is at the apex of the pointing triangle, you'll see he's gonna enter. And usually straight punches are more difficult to defend against. And in this particular way, you'll see how arm crashing works for entry as I counter. I'm just gonna maintain my natural position here. He lead punch, and you can see me here, where we're hip to hip. And all I have to do is to set and throw them. However, what allowed me to do that in the proper way, and I'm slowing it down so you can see it normally, it's much faster. I've broken his structure down more as I enter, and I, like in other videos, I'm trying not to uh, injure his, especially his shoulder too, too much. But my evasiveness is the footwork, I move in here, scissor step, and I'm stepping forward and entering until our hips collide. And I'm using that arm crashing drill type maneuver we use to get inside to strike him in his face. Now when we do that, you can see, you can see my hand bounced off. I'm also hit with my palm, my arm, my hips are here, and he's almost thrown right here. If I were to if I were to lunge a little bit more, he'd be thrown already. The oh, beset yeah. is almost a gimme. So from here I beset and I have to hold him up. Um, you can also use this on the inside if he does lead punch again. And you can see, I've arm crashed him, struck his face, and my arm has also struck him, torqued his entire skeleton, and I, my knee is in here, and I can easily sapu or leg crash through to his second leg. You neck okay? Mm -hmm. Leg crash through to his second leg. If I sapu, he's down, especially after that strike, throwing him back on his weight, or step through and crash through the second leg and throw him again. But that all comes from that arm crashing drill I just showed you. Now, showing you off the lead because that's usually the quickest punch and the hardest to see, but naturally you'll see it off the reverse. And with that, it's even, yeah, he, was, he got off balance immediately. With that, hit reverse punch again. And I didn't step that way just so you'd see it and not my feet. When you do it, slow it down so they can see. You do a reverse punch and crash immediately. His skeleton is torqued or twisted even more than usual. And my spiraling movement, I'm pushing, turning my ankles, toes, knees, hips, waist, shoulders. So when I hit, it's my entire body turning and I make contact and my weight drops into his arm. Makes contact and I strike him. You see here, I'm touching his neck, but I'm showing his face. So that's a clue. My spine is going that way. Right. Right so, where I'm not prepared. Yeah, and my center's moving exactly. And I'm throwing him to the weakest point of his balance. So when I hit, and I haven't even started moving my foot just so you can see it more clearly, where in reality, we're here to throw it. And I slowed it down again. So otherwise, he would simply uh, just be head yeah, tossed head into first. The, yeah, head tossed into the concrete. Even with that on, it's going to hurt. Uh, now he knows how to fall on concrete and he'll be okay, but what's the point? This is a uh, video purposes. Uh, and again, that's outside in. If he throws a lead punch to this side and I'm caught in the wear, it's inside in. You can see like I did before, he's down. And if I want to throw him, he's thrown if I finish the movement. It's, in reality, the whole thing would have been, and he, would, he would have been gone uh, with a very heavy strike, me uncoiling, striking, and him being thrown to the ground. Um, also, just like in the reverse, I can throw it inside and throw him again. <laughs> and I slow it down so you can see the contact 
Uh, in reality, if, if I make that that strike at even three quarter speed or half speed, he's going to be thrown. Uh, there's no way I have to show him like 25%. Um, skeletal positioning relative to the other, very, very important. Skeletal structure, so I can impose my center and weight upon him while he thinks he's doing it on me. Very, very important. That's why we do our fundamentals. That's why we practice our form. That's why we practice our drills. Um, the warm-ups help too. Uh, also, from here you can see I'm getting out of the way of the, of the force he's projecting and I'm crashing and changing his weight balance and skeletal positioning to my benefit, not from his. And even on this side, you can see, sometimes I might do it a little early so I'm striking on the inside of his reverse punch, but I'm still moving out here. And you can see from this way, if I'm here and he's striking, he can't really counter strike with any kind of balance. But if I want, I can move directly along those lines. And he took a short step, but I'm gonna show you anyway to beset and throw him. And you can see here, if I want to, I can finish the throw and throw him directly to the ground. However, this is not that kind of video. The video is about arm crashing and how we use them for entrance. And simply, I've been showing same side, so you can see, except when we moved over, but you also have it on opposite side. If I want to do, say, pressing palm, arm crash, contact, to pressing palm to enter, so I have a cleaner hit on him and I adjust his skeleton even worse for the beset, like I showed in the first self-defense or the first application I usually show in class. So if he throws the lead punch, immediately he's trying to go down. That that was is I move over pressing palm to striking palm and striking in. And we don't strike with just this, we strike with our entire body. So when my palm hits, also my forearm will also strike the base of his neck after striking his face. And my elbow may also strike him while my weight continues to enter through his body. Um, that was on the outside, pressing palm, changing that skeletal position and allow me to enter cleaner. If I want to enter on the inside, I don't even have to worry about it. He does a lead punch and I simply enter that way. And you can see he struck me in my shoulder and I slowed down so you can see it. But it's incidental to me. The reason why is he struck me like most people. He's bringing that punch and that hit. But I'm solid. When you hit me, what'd you feel? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah, felt, rising up. You felt like you were punching a wall. That's because I'm planted, and my entire body is sunk. Uh, so when he hit me, I just allowed that force to enter the ground, and it, and he felt like he was punching the side of the house instead of a normal person hitting and turning. It doesn't happen, and the reason why is I'm connected, and that's what we practice Bagua, developing Bagua Punta Sila, Sila body is you're connected. So his punch to one part of me is supported by the rest of me. So I feel it, but it's not much. Um, and I can adjust my skeleton to accept it, let it travel, and I can still hit him anyway. Uh, and that's another thing I wanted you to see. So when you're rooted properly, relaxed properly, connected properly, moving properly, things don't work in a way that most people expect. And you can inflict your will or handle someone else's body in an entirely different way than what they think they're used to encountering. Um, so, however, I will say some grapplers do move, especially wrestlers, because they're used to force and playing with it, move in a similar way. But we use it in a way to elicit strikes and accept strikes on top of the grappling. So grappling for us is nothing new. We do it quite a bit. Um, and we take that idea of rooting and grounding and using it in a way to make strikes. And that's what arm crashing is. You're taking that body, entire body weight, moving it through in a wave or a pulse and crashing through someone's extended appendage into their body so you can manipulate their skeleton on a strike without this contact. You can do it from a distance and it's very disconcerting to someone who's never encountered that. Inside, opposite arm, and you can see here, and it's even worse, I'm stopping him so he doesn't fall. But I've entered here, I've crashed this arm, struck his face, and you can see me stepping forward with the same side. I can easily throw him with the sapu to where he can't recover. The first thing that's gonna hit the ground is gonna be his head uh, with his foot about right here. It's a horrible fall, which is why uh, 
but very aware of throwing reverse punches or cross punches on someone who might be expecting of it because it's a terrible fall when they when they know how to counter that effectively. Also, you could do it from the outside, same way, reverse punch. And, and I'm trying not to show it. However, I'll do it slow so they can see. Enter and, and continue. And I didn't continue because I knew if I did, he would have he would fall. He would he would been thrown uh, because he. He brought too much weight into that yeah, arm. I'm loading up all my weight right here. Yeah, he brought too much weight into that arm, and if I would have finished that and not stopped, that, that would have just thrown him immediately because I would have taken that weight. And, I immediately get tipped that way. Yeah, I would have thrown him. So I, that's why I stopped. And um, when you have a partner you practice it, you'll see. Um, I know on video it's hard to see, and it's like that doesn't make any sense, but as soon as you start practicing these things, it will make a great deal of sense. And I'll show you when we practice sparring techniques and uh, other drills to to understand how that goes but first i'm going to show you how to fall uh, so that when these falls occur especially on concrete it's not that bad but some of these falls can't be mitigated some of these falls are designed to inflict injury on your opponent no matter what which is why we're hesitant or i'm hesitant to do so um, and you can see again these movements just like just like in the drills um, he's bringing it forward and we evade him now sometimes I might want to crash through, where if he punches, he's at the apex of the triangle, I'm at the apex of the triangle, he punches, and I just punch directly forward, crashing through, and then I'm beset, you can see I'm beset on the other side. Now, I'm, he's not throwing a counter punch, one, because his spine is off balance, yeah, and matter. he's off balance, he would go nowhere. but even if he did, he might have clipped me, that's okay, normally I would have done it, do it again, yeah, and I would have entered anyway. And he would have been even in worse shape, and I would have beset him and thrown him. So, arm crashing. Practice these techniques either side, both sides. Um, have the guy put some pads on, make a little light contact, because you want your partner to come back. We're still at the basic level, so I don't want to see even half power strikes right now. You got to get conditioned for that, and, the, and you need to know how to move structurally. If you try to hit too hard too soon, you're going to throw your structure off you're going to throw you're going to start reverting back to your other martial art instead of learning this martial art and you're not going to be doing bagua kung tao sila you'll be doing something else and other arts are fine they're wonderful but this one's different and i'm trying to show you the differences why they're that way and how we move how we move differently to affect certain things that don't happen in other arts especially in a combative way so thank you for watching please like and subscribe and i'll see you later and please go to my website, www.popsigong.com. That's www.popsigung.com. Sign up and be a member and go to the forums, and I'll be happy to discuss any of these things you see in video.